But this was an interesting article, and it, it kind of makes you think a little bit. This one's going to be about, uh, you know, the village or city of uh, Wildwood is uh, considering canceling the Roar to the Shore uh, biker event. Uh, before we get going, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, go visit us on our other social media accounts like Facebook, and don't forget HarleyLiberty.com for all your daily biker news. So let's go into this and let's ask our quest uh, question, actually, of is the clubs actually taking down some of these event over their political stuff? So let's get on and see what uh, this has to say. This is from the Press of Atlantic City. As more outlaw bikers show up, Wildwood considers canceling a roar to the shore. And this is by Colt Smith. Let's see here. You know, it got a good picture of the pagans. Wildwood bikers with the annual roar to the shore event may have outstayed their welcome. Citing an increased presence of outlaw motorcycle gangs in recent years, officials in Wildwood are considering canceling the event. Now, now you guys see when I do the biker angle, actually, where the full article here. And that was a question I had from, actually, uh, a subscriber. Why are we able to do the Leo news the way we do uh, with the screenshots and stuff like that? And I'm showing you how we're doing it right now and how the article actually looks. But uh, the reason why we do that is because we got to pay for these articles to use them on video. So, anyway, let's keep on going on. Though he's urging a wait-and-see approach, Commissioner Pete Byron said the event has undoubtedly changed. It's morphed into something that it really never started as, Byron said. It's become a heavy dose of the outlaw type of bike guys, and it's a little bit intimidating to the family-orientated biker. Now, that, you know... Bikers are bikers, you know, club guys are club guys, and I don't think just because the presence of colors at an event is going to be intimidating to a, uh, quote, family biker type of uh, deal here, man, because all bikers know that go to these events that, you know, who, what's what, there's different uh, subcultures within the culture, so it, that just makes no sense. Event promoter Joe Murray did not respond to multiple requests for comment. The 23rd year, uh, what's here? The 23rd annual gathering took place September 5th through the 8th, and Byron said commissioners received calls from people in the community upset with what the event has become. Now that is something I, you know, you really got to look at as uh, club members out there is the way the general public is starting to look at you. Now, these are the people that vote, and these are the people that sit on juries. And one of the biggest things I've always said on this program is, it's time for clubs to get like a public relations officer or something, start getting your side of the story out, because I don't think it's the family-orientated bikers like this commissioner said, but I think it is the civilians around there that are getting a little... Uh, uh, nervous, if you will, seeing this kind of stuff. You know, they've been exposed to uh, TV, the shows, all that type of stuff, just like everyone else. And uh, yeah, I think it's them nervous. And when them people get nervous, they start getting on the uh, public officials, and the public officials start making the move. So that's a real big reason why you need to get that uh, public relations officer. Anyway. The city paid about $40,000 this year for police overtime, Byron said. In a Facebook post, Wildwood police listed 26 arrests during Roar to the Shore. Multiple people were charged with possession of a weapon for an unlawful purpose and were found with handguns, knives, and brass knuckles. Pe multiple people were charged with possession of a controlled dangerous substance and were found with hydrocodone, methamphetamine, and marijuana. Other charges include driving under the influence step of a movable property and conspiracy to commit robbery. It was unclear whether all the charges listed were filed against Roar participants. Now, you know, I can see, 
you know, where people get messed up. Me, you know what? I'm a 420 guy all over the place. You know, I love 420. But when you're talking about meth and uh, pills and all that type of stuff, man, you're not only ruining yourself, but you're ruining a lot of people families who aren't doing that stuff and i think whoever does you know sells the meth and the hydro and all that kind of stuff your low life's pos's man you really are and you're really destroying what club members really are about if that's who they're talking about because not everybody guys in a motorcycle club goes out there sells this or sells that there ain't no big conspiracy where there's a whole organization behind these type of things but these kind of idiots that if they are club members are the ones that give clubs a bad name and you wonder why that you got all these law enforcement agencies up your butt because you're not policing your own people now as far as handguns knives brass knuckles now i'm a big second amendment guy as far as guns but i also do believe in you follow the damn law now if you don't got a concealed carry which a lot of us had to go through and get yeah it stinks that we have to do it but we still do it and you know it's legal that way you know care what you can ask yourself what are you carrying a handgun around for if you're not legal and you're at one of these events and stuff like that are you waiting for something to pop off whatever brass knuckles same thing uh so and theft the movable property and conspiracy to commit robbery come on then you wonder why the citizens over here are getting on these commissioners' butts because this is the kind of freaking arrest that went down. Movable property, I hope that isn't uh, stealing motorcycles because anybody that steals a motorcycle, I don't care if they're a club member, I don't care if they're independent, you're a POS. Straight up, you're white trash, black trash, Hispanic trash, whatever you want to call it, that's what you are if you got to go around stealing somebody's ride. And personally, I wish it was going back to the Old West when you stole a horse, somebody would hang. Because, you know, Harley Davidson's are investments, or, you know, you can go with the bigger, you know, rockets and stuff. They're investments, man. People go to work every day to pay for that motorcycle. And here you junks are uh, going around stealing it, man. You're, you're just trash, man. That's just the way I think. Anyway, police said they worked with the Cape May County Prosecutor's Office and other law enforcement agencies during the event. Even so, the event plays host to legions of biking hobbyists and nonviolent clubs who could see their annual get-together evaporate, taken over by unwelcome groups. For city businesses, the after, -day, or after Labor Day event brings thousands of potential customers to Shoretown when it otherwise starts to empty out. Now, <laughs> let's get back to it. You know, nonviolent clubs and stuff like that, okay, cool. They're talking about unwelcome groups. Well, you know, what made them to be unwelcome groups? You know, yeah, there's two sides of the story. There's the freaking side of the, the bikers, club members, what, so have you, whatever they're talking about on this. And then you got the other side where, you know, the... People don't like seeing these type of arrests in their city. Now, does this ruin it for the whole biking community politics? Or guys that are just throwing on vests, uh, they got the colors on, going out there trying to intimidate? You're damn right it ruins events for everybody else. And I think that is the main reason why after we did that poll earlier this year, that only 30% of bikers supported club guys 30 percent oh wow is that an upside down number when it used to be in the old days everybody supported clubs but because of the intimidation and the bullying as people say nowadays people are turned off by clubs and now you know it does get old when clubs go to these events and then there's some kind of incident that happens pops off and it ruins it for everybody. My question is, if you got to do something, why are you going to bring it to a major event and screw it up for everybody else? I just don't get that. Anyway, should the city decide the rally is not in its best interest, it can deny the permit application, Byron said. But that has no bearing on bikers choosing to congregate in town on their own. Employees at accommodations near Rio Grande and Atlantic Avenue said their guests every year have been largely peaceful. 
which is a good thing to hear. Quote, the gentlemen and ladies are always polite, friendly, they like staying here, said Bob Schuler, front desk manager at the Starlux Hotel. It's definitely good for business, which, it, you know what, every town that a rally's held in, it is good business for the people there. But on the same hand, they don't expect the violence going out on the street either. Schaller said the event is always preempted by increased police presence. The only issue it's ever caused for him is noise. It's loud, he said, laughing. I'm a resident also. I live two blocks away, so for me, it's loud. Around the corner from the Starlex, Dave Elzili, whatever his last name is, whose family owns the Crystal Sands Motel, said they're part of the city. Generally doesn't see any crime or residual problems from Roar to the Shore. Their clientele is generally regular motorcycle enthusiasts. There are a few bars in their immediate area, and the outlaw gangs tend to stay at hotels and motels farther down Atlantic Avenue towards the middle of the city, he said. If there's any riffraff, it tends to stay up that way. They get the pagans and all the other people, he said. Now, that is concerning right there because he names a club. And this guy is a citizen, and he's equating them to riffraff. Now, you got to ask yourself, with the club uh, mentioned, what are they doing to get the citizens to think this way? Public relations officer, man. The biggest complaint here would be noise because Rio Grande Avenue is the main drag out here. Well, it's noisy, but other than that, it's positive. Byron said the topic was introduced in a commissioner's meeting soon after this year's event. He was taken aback by the suggestion that they nix roar to the shore entirely. The decision would need to be made after discussions with the police, the promoter, business owners, and community members. That right there is where, you know, not only the organizer, but the bikers that go to this event need to show up to that meeting and get their voice out there. Well, maybe there's a way that we can fix this rather than just uh, spontaneously and emotionally just saying, no, this is going to go away, Byron said, and that's my feeling. I'm not saying I'm for or against it. What I'm saying is I'm not ready to pull the trigger on it until we've looked at this inside and out. Beyond the crime, another aspect at play is the appearance of increased police presence in the town looking to attract families on vacation. I don't like walking down the street and having my 12-year-old look up at a motel and seeing a sniper there and trying to explain to them why SWAT teams all over the place, he said. That's not what Wildwood's all about, so that's not what we're trying to protect. Now, if you actually look at that, you know, why the hell they got snipers on the top of the roof, you know? I never... <laughs> snipers on top of the roof? Give me a freaking break man uh but anyway you know i can see you know the citizens concerned in this type of stuff with them kind of arrest and you know again this goes right back on getting your story out to the the public you know clubs have always had this thing where we don't talk to the media we don't care what citizens have to say well you're starting to see the uh, effects of that kind of stance man clubs are getting uh, blown away left and right in the media. People are turning it on them. And if you want to cry Leo conspiracy, well, Leos are the ones talking in the newspaper and you guys ain't. So you might want to think about that uh, before you start crying and get out there and be uh, proactive in this stuff. Anyway, what do you guys think? Do you think uh, motorcycle clubs are starting to ruin uh, run-of-the-mill biker rallies, events, all that type of stuff? Tell me what you think. Have you seen anything out there that uh, leads you to think this way? The whole nine yards. Until then, subscribe to the channel, like it, share it all over social media if you want to help us out. Thanks, everybody, for all the donations that you give. You can give them at paypal.com at uh, insane, or uh, yeah, at, uh, I'd have put the information down in the thing for you guys, man. I'm not going to go through the HTTPs and all that stuff. Don't forget Biker Angle in the morning, law enforcement news at night. I'll talk to you later.